The number three and four way of being a masterful scientist of our lives, avoid ad hominems and confirmation bias. Let me explain. Okay, so previously we showed you how you actually are the core scientist of your life and how to get better at being one by identifying logical fallacies and incongruities in your forming of conclusions and theories. Now, if you want to get paid to be a scientist and sharpen your skills on one particular field of knowledge even more, you definitely can. But that doesn't mean you ain't no scientist before you get that degree. I mean, why be in school for 13 years if not to be a better scientist? In fact, <laughs> if anyone tells you that, they don't know what science is. And that, by the way, is another logical fallacy called ad hominems, where you insult a person and their experience without getting to the reasoning or science behind their observations. What you do have to watch out for is making sure your reasoning is sound in the conclusions you formed and that you haven't ignored or overlooked any data. That could lead to a flaw of causality, thinking something is because of one thing rather than checking to see if it could be any other factor. You could also do that by confirmation bias, only looking at evidence you want to look at and not anything else that could move toward a different conclusion. Like, friend, I know I'm allergic to strawberry and not the orange I also ate with it because strawberry allergies look like what I experienced. You. But wait, it says here orange allergies also look like that too. Friend, I don't care. A true scientist looks at all data and possible answers and weighs them out. So to be an optimal scientist in your life, do better than that. More coming up next.